Now, with severe restrictions on hospital visiting, the role of chaplains has never been more important. Well, BBC South's Mike Apps has been to the Royal Bournemouth Hospital to meet the chaplain, the Reverend David Flower. Whilst he was there, he also spoke to Majid Yassim, the imam at the Bournemouth Islamic Centre, and Dr Hamidi Nate Sharif, a trustee of the centre. Well, David Flower first explained to Mike how important chaplaincy is. The role that chaplains have in the NHS is, is one that is, is, is greatly appreciated, I think, and we, we greatly appreciate the opportunity to um, spend the last moments with somebody at the end of their lives, never, never assuming that that's going to be uh, what we're going to be asked to do. Uh, but when we are called in to do that, it's a, it's a wonderful privilege uh, just to be with, with individuals, with patients, um, with their families and friends, and, and indeed in supporting staff. How has what you and the other chaplains do had to change because of COVID-19? Well, one of the things that we, uh, we, we had to do, first of all, was to ensure that we were uh, trained up to use PPE. How we, how we dress up and how we, how we undress um, has, has been a useful thing. And also on a practical level, you've had to change things like the, the, the prayer books that you would normally take in if you're going to make a, a ward visit. Yes. I mean, again, we, we've, we've often done that with our, our, our prayer cards when we've uh, taken those in to uh, spend time with patients who are under infection control protocols, um, but to ensure that they are laminated so that they can be uh, wiped easily <clears throat> and so that we're not carrying, um, taking in any infection or taking out any infection to make sure that we, we keep in line with with other protocols that might be in existence on a particular ward. And under normal circumstances as well, you clearly have the relationship with um, other faith leaders, other faith groups in, in the area, um, being a point of contact if, if patients want to have a, a visit from them. So now, um, just explain how it's working then as far as if, if you have someone who is uh, critically ill with uh, COVID-19. Yes, often we are, <coughs> we are a signpost in the sense that we would have a request from a ward um, and uh, the uh, staff or family individuals would be contacting us and saying um, that we would like to have somebody from our own faith group. Um, and um, in, the, in the last few days we've been working um, particularly closely with, with our Muslim friends. It's, it's wonderful to know that um, friends from the, the mosque will come and, and, and visit and do whatever is necessary. Um, we have uh, a joint prayer room and chapel here at Bournemouth um, and it's, it's great often for us to, to be linking in together. So we are working together all the time, uh, not just with the Muslim community, uh, but with our, our Jewish friends um, and, and members of other communities, the Buddhists and, and others, who, who we will uh, work with and ask them to come in when needed. Do you feel almost an added sense of responsibility at this current time? Normally, there's great opportunities to spend time sitting with patients um, who, who don't have any relatives or friends. Um, and, and, and we continue to do that if, if requested to do so. Um, as, as the case in, in most uh, chaplaincies, uh, we, we offer a 24-7 service. Uh, so there is always a chaplain on duty, always a chaplain available to come um, and to spend time with, uh, with, with uh, an individual, um, and particularly if, they, if their family is far away or maybe they don't have any family here um, that, that can come, then, then we can do that. I, I've always said that we greatly appreciate uh, the opportunity that the NHS and individual hospitals give us uh, to, to conduct our ministry and our service um, in a way that, that is predominant. Uh, first and foremost in our minds, um, acceptable to God, uh, but secondly, uh, one in which we can, uh, we can meet the needs of human beings at a point where they are, uh, rather than expecting them to be in a particular place for us. 
That's the Reverend David Flower. He is the Christian chaplain at Bournemouth Hospital, Royal Bournemouth Hospital, uh, speaking there to Mike Apps. Now, whilst Mike was there, he also spoke to Majid Yassim, uh, the imam at the Bournemouth Islamic Centre. Actually, it is uh, very important. We support the patient. And, uh, you know, in this case, we can't visit them and touch with them. But uh, we contact by, you know, um, uh, contact uh, through the chaplaincy and ask about them. And I'm sure from the point of view of, of, of not just the patients, but also their families, to know that you're able to provide this support, uh, really important. Uh, that's right, yes, of course. We support all, the family and the patients. It's, it's never easy to be in, in hospital. I'm sure when you're um, seeing people under normal circumstances, it's, it's, it can be tough. But to be having to be separate from your family and friends, it really makes the role of what you're doing so important. Yes, and even the, the family, they can't visit them. They vis visit the, the patient or visit the, their patient. Uh, but um, we should also be careful uh, when uh, visit uh, them. But at least we support them. This is we can't do. More than this, we can't do anything. This is our, our duty uh, uh, for the, the families. Muslim or non-Muslim, uh, this is we should uh, support them. That is uh, Yassim, um, ha Yassim, uh, Im and the Imam, yes, sorry, Majid Yassim, uh, the Imam at the Bournemouth Islamic Centre. Well, Dr. Hamadi Neet Sharif is a trustee at the Islamic Centre, and he told Mike Apps about the importance of the Islamic community and also, importantly, look towards the future. Yeah, again, with the lockdown, we, the, the mosque was, we used to be, or the Islamic Center used to be the center of everything, and uh, it's there, where it's, it's our social uh, place where we get together. But once the lockdown happened, the mosque had to close, and uh, people had to stay at home, and it's, it's quite, it has made it quite uh, difficult. Having said that, we still have uh, the members of the community going around. They are uh, happy to help each other, happy to help uh, the, the community at large. So we have a different group that have uh, started, when, uh, especially when, when the, uh, with the COVID-19. We have two uh, main groups. One is the uh, Bournemouth Islamic Center and Central Mosque Support Group, which uh, is uh, helping with the uh, frontline NHS staff. We, we are providing uh, meals for, hot meals for uh, staff in, both, uh, in, in the three hospitals in Dorset. We have another one which is looking after the homeless. So there are so many things that have come out of the community when when this COVID-19 this uh, lockdown happened, and and it's really the time of people to come back to that to to, to, to their faith in a way. Because once you are in in trouble, it's the moment where we think about God, when you think about uh, your life in a different uh, way, and uh, so many people now are thinking about God more than, uh, than ever, and that support that the Islamic Center can, can offer is, is, is very important and, and uh, vital. And we have uh, seen many people who are coming to, to, to learn more about their religion at, the, at this moment of, of a crisis, and it's just part of the nature of the, of the human being to, to want to, uh, to go one step further thinking about the life as a whole, it, because this crisis has put everything in question. What we are used to, the, the life we are used to, is no more there. It means the perception of the world will change and it, has, it is changing and the way we will see uh, the world ev evolve after COVID-19 will be something that to look for. That's Dr. Hamidi Nate Sherry, a trustee of the Bournemouth Islamic Centre, talking to the BBC's Mike Apps. You also heard the Imam from the Central Mosque, Majid Yassim, and the chaplain at the Royal Bournemouth Hospital, the Reverend David Flower.